All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to reports, the Senate approved the President's supplementary budget, saying that the National Assembly took into con um, cognizance the suffering of Nigerians in <laughs> giving accelerated consideration to the $2.17 trillion supplementary appropriation bill. Now, in the case of the FCT, the minister noted that an amount of $100 billion was approved to support the Federal Capital Territory for urgent and immediate capital projects. Now, investing this 100 billion naira in Nigeria's economy could yield significant benefits, including improved infrastructure, enhanced cultural productivity, a more skilled workforce, better health care, support for small businesses, stronger social protection, and advancement in technology and innovation. Now, these investments could lead to increased economic growth, job creation, and improved living standards for Nigerians. In, the, in reference to the budget alloca um, allocated to the Federal Capital Territory, today we're asking, what can 100 billion Naira do for Nigeria's economy? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So I'll bring in a care message in a second. I just want to hear your thoughts. When you hear, you see, see I want to speak English that is not English. <laughs> Well, yeah, 100 billion. <laughs> what comes to your mind? It's like 1 million now. <laughs> in Nigeria now. Because we're ready to join the calling I want to know what's the issue. Is the issue the fact that the supplementary budget called just FCT and did not call Lagos um, stating 100 billion? Because I was just reading through, like, that's 2022, anyways. I know you're going to say that probably you want me to. But I'm like, Learn okay, your point, what's, right now. what's our problem with? 100 billion, I mean, it's 100 billion looking at how Nigeria is now. I mean, that's how I feel. So, I was going through uh, my little research last year. I think there's a data that shows FCT generated about 142 billion. So, I think like if 100 million is billion, going, billion sorry, is going to FCT, I think it's, it's sort of fair for you know, I, I think space it's that generated, okay, yeah. Or so that's what I want to understand. Is it the fact that maybe they did not mention Lagos or River States or other states and just FCT? So that's why they buy them. Is it bad? They they call it. We are now discussing. <laughs> <laughs> I will not help you to understand it. God will not let me to help you to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, let me hear your I, I don't know. This thing is quite um, dicey, really. Um, FCT is a state and, um, well, People live in a city. It's the capital in Nigeria. So it is expected that certain, you know, um, they, will get, they will have certain privileges. privileges. I mean, but, I mean, if, again, I, I, I like what um, Barry said that really what's the issue. Is it the fact that um, because of the state of the economy of the nation, you know, um, or is it because we are privy to the line that says that 100 billion is for you know the state capital do we know how much other states are getting maybe if we know how much other states are getting it would be so ridiculous that people would you know there'd be a riot or because in actual sense what if i mean really 100 billion is needed for infrastructure are you seeing my bombastic I, I, I know that you are rolling your eyes my but my I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying i'm just trying to I'm, I'm just trying to because i mean people live in Abuja, really? people in don't FCT. live in lagos okay. people don't live in kaduna people don't live in, in data states that is bringing almost all the i mean the entire niger data that is bringing almost your all the wealth that comes from your people don't live there but okay so are you saying that those states are not getting anything i don't know so okay, so well, Kemesis yeah, no, is there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a legal practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legal practitioner, Jobo, political analyst, research consultant, and communications professional and public affairs commentator. He's currently the head of research at SVM Intelligence, an African-focused uh, risk consultancy and Nigeria's foremost geopolit uh, geopolitical intelligence firm based in Lagos, where he manages a diverse research team that spans all Nigeria's 36 states, as well as Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, and South Africa. He's had a long career in political, uh, political blogging and has acted as an out, um, outside consultant to four Nigerian governorship races and has managed regulatory and um, compliance affairs as well as strategic communication for a number of Nigerian 
and international multinationals. Thank you so much, Oikesa. It can't mess it. They're asking me a question that I do not know. Thank you for, for joining us. So, <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm very it can be said. This is not bad, Bele. <laughs> Let me just give this to people my criminally go back. To say that. This is not bad, Bele. Let, you are, you said you they give me you they give me hand on your cheek. You go walk. <laughs> but literally, right? In all honesty, what does the FCT generate that would warrant a hundred billion naira? And Diola asked a very pertinent, I mean, in, uh, important question, and, and I think Glory touched on it as well. What are the other states being given, you understand? What are the allocations that goes to other states? So maybe that would help us rationalize because it is not making sense to me, right? If you talk about one of the states that is well, in terms of infrastructure that you mentioned, that is well developed and everything, FCT still has one of the best infrastructure in Nigeria, sure. right? There are other states that are really, really suffering. But I don't understand why 100 billion will be allocated to the FCT. And... The conversation that I read, I've not read more, but they said they want to make FCT to be a par with other cities of the world. You can mess it. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so it's, it, it, it's a difficult conversation. I think the first, the first thing I should say is that um, just in terms of uh, number sizes, the, the FCT budgetary allocation is... Uh, is big and it has been big for a while, right? So um, let's compare what the 2023 budget, the full budget, right? And um, for the for the current uh, or the current minister of the FCT, right? Yes, in which case last portfolio as uh, governor of River State and what sort of the, the original budget for the FCT was. So the 2023 state budget for River State is 555.6 billion naira, right? The budget for the FCT, the, the full 2023 budget for the FCT is 579.69 billion naira. So already off the bat, the the FCT's budget is bigger than real. And River State is not a small state. This is by you know this is by federal allocations. Rivers receives the most money of any state in the country. By IGR, I think it's second or third on any given year, uh, give or take. Right. So it's it's not a small state. It's it's home to multinational oil operations. It's a very commercial state. There are other you know foreign and domestic direct investments that are housed in the state. So you know in Nigerian terms, I know it doesn't feel that way on the ground, but in Nigerian terms, it's a rich state, and the FCT's budget is is slightly bigger than it. So in that sense, a hundred billion naira is is not very remarkable and actually the FCT is officially asking for more. This is just, I, I believe, you know, either a first tranche. So one of the challenges with the, the reporting around this issue is that it's not clear if this is a supplement on the 579 billion naira that was orig originally earmarked for the FCT or this, if this is a part of it. And the media reporting around this um, is not clear the certainly the, the minister and his office have also not been clear on whether this is part of the bigger part or if this is in addition uh, right to that. So you know, and, and I think the final thing that I should say about um, Abuja is that by population, it's what Nigeria's third or fourth um, biggest city, biggest uh, metropolitan area. So it's got. A lot of significant needs, right? So I get him. He's saying that it has a lot of significant needs. He was yeah. trying to say infrastructure, yeah, and uh, based on the size of the city, there's no other. I can mess it. Are you back? Hello. Okay. Mm. So I mean, <laughs> it's actually unclear mm. what the real issue is. But for me, I feel like um, maybe. A lot of people are agitated off of the back of the 
160 million per vehicle mm. times 360 um, vehicles that they claim that they want to buy for uh, what's it called the National Assembly, right? Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of things seemed lopsided mm. when the issue of the yard came up. So this is like an accumu accumulated, yeah. um, what's it called, concern. That a lot of people are just wondering, is that these people don't care or it's just being insensitive? Then you now move 10 billion to, what's it called, education, um, student, loans, student loans, right? So you say you are the extra 5 million on the yard, you're moving it to the student's um, what's it called, student loan, mm. only for us to hear over the weekend that that yacht was, they, they delivered it into our waters, you know, that, you know, like, literally, so, I think it's the shroudiness mm. around the body. Okay, you oh, yes, we can hear you now. So, Ikeba you were, oh, okay. you were um, saying that you, you feel like because Abuja is a city and it would have a lot of infrastructural needs, that was where we lost your audio. Oh, okay. Um, I'm still trying to to get my my video on. Yes. So, so the point is that um, Abuja is big. I think that's that's the, the longer shot, right, of the story. It would have been nice to have more clarity on whether this is an additional supplement to, you know, the 500 plus billion naira that was already allocated, or or if this is you know, and part of that part. But Abuja has significant needs, let's be very clear. And... Oh, shoot. Mm. And what are those significant this needs? Well, other states, don't they have significant needs too? But <laughs> other states have governors. Abuja doesn't have a governor. So it falls to the, I don't know, the, the federal government so to speak by default yeah it generates by default, revenue exactly i think I'm, I'm not very sure you know but again i mean it's the capital city of civil service in the country so that's uh, that means that there are people mm. there and those people will need infrastructure in terms of healthcare, in terms of roads although like who i said i mean abuja has one of the best roads in, in the country let me even bring you back to mm. our question. What can 100 billion do? Let me break it down. Let, let me assume like 1 million Nigerian youth. That's like saying 100,000 per person. What can it really do in this time and age in Nigeria mm -hmm. now in terms of maybe business? Or, so because even um, breaking down the supplementary budget, I saw where there was also, I think, about 410 billion, 400 billion cash to vulnerable households. So I keep wondering how sustainable some of these palliatives and I think, yeah. so it also I, I also saw a part where the government um, borrowed to be able to fund this. How sustainable is this? Isn't it um, wiser? That's my own point of view to invest in um, things which probably um, will I say um, increases business activities. You know, empowering the youth and also. Talking about, um, there was also the appropriation to agriculture. What about manufacturing? So I don't see, like, proper, we have, like, real challenges. We have challenges in manufacturing. The reason why USD is going up crazy and everything is because we are importing a lot and there's yeah. huge real. So there's, it's come to that time where we really need to promote manufacturing. But when this supplementary budget is coming out, we don't still see it speaking to those aspects of the economy. So, like, what can 100... 100,000, 100 billion naira really do to we Nigerians? It can do a lot, right? So for me, I think that it is... Um, so I always say that sometimes I see a lot of our leaders major in the minor and minor in the major. Mm. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back from that break, we'll try to reconnect with chemists. But it is well. <laughs> Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're having a conversation around the supplementary budget, and we're discussing this 100 billion that is allocated to FCT. <laughs> and the chemistry is still with us. Please let's share what you have to remember. You can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1803 right, So let me come to you, D. I'm sure you have a question for chemistry. Okay. I, I don't even know where to start from, honestly. Um, so. I like, you know, his, um, his line of thoughts about um, the reporting around it and um, also 
you know, that the reporting does not give clear information as to, you know, what this fund is really for. So, I mean, if, so I'm going to ask you, can I say it? I mean, if we want to get that kind of information, where do we get it from? And then, um, is, are, are Nigerians being unnecessarily sentimental? As in, are we being, you know, being typical Nigerians by raising the records to say, oh, 100 billion, or is it really just a trivial matter? Like, I mean, hmm. let's just move on. You, you know? Uh, so, I, I don't know that... Uh... I, I don't know that discussions around uh, government allocations or what government wants to do with money is a trivial matter. I think it absolutely makes sense for Nigerians. Mm. Oh, sugar. The network. network. And the conversation is focused on the right things, right? So, for me, I don't think the question should be why is the FCT getting a hundred billion dollars? Or maybe if it's a, a question, I don't think it should be a major one. I think the question for me is, and these are the real concerns I have with the FCC and a lot of other Nigerian states, is what are, what do you plan to do with the monies? And what have you done with budgetary allocations that you've had in the past? Right? And and to to, to the point you made while you were asking and uh, the question is here about um, where do you find the information? That's precisely the point, and that's precisely the problem. And a lot of our questioning and our demand for accountability of government officials has to circle around that. There is no website right now, right? It's certainly not on the Federal Capital Territory Administration's website or the FCT Ministry's website, although it doesn't really have a separate website, or any other government repository, or even with the NBS what these budgetary allocations, especially for the FCT, is used for, right? Even civic organizations like Budget, which releases, you know, um, a flagship state of the state report where they basically measure how well governments are using budgetary allocations and resources and what the level of their debt is. I was at the report launched, I think, three or so weeks ago in Abuja. They don't track data for the FCT because it's very hard to find data. Almost always, the only thing, the only kind, the only paper trail, right, of uh, fiscal allocations for the FCT is when announcements are made about the budget. Okay. There are no budget implementation reports. Under our fiscal appropriation, you know, laws, the Fiscal Appropriation Act, for example, the Fiscal Responsibility Act as well, every state as well as federal government is supposed to write at the end of every financial year, release a budget, prepare and release a budget implementation report, which will show what they plan to spend money on and what they actually spent money on and you know what sort of debt or outstanding commitments mm. that they have. Very few states, relatively, I think the last I checked, you can only find data for about 16, 17 states, release budget implementation reports. Even fewer states, right, consistently release budget implementation reports. So there are very few states, and which are less, but they prepared 2023 budgets. They in, are asking for supplementary budgets, right, in, in many cases. Right? And, and so for me, that's the big question, is that from a transparency and, and, and an accountability standpoint, the FCT is actually one of the worst performers, right? It is easier for me to find information about my home state, about Kwaibom, or about Gombe, or about Kogi, or about Oyo, or about Rivers, than it is to find about the FCT. And where does that responsibility lie? Partly it lies, well, a lot of it lies, obviously, with the FCT ministry, but also a big part of it also lies with the federal government, because the federal government has legislative, yeah. and administrative oversight, right, for the FCT. So it is the National Assembly that makes laws mm. for the federal capital territory. It is the National Assembly that approves the budget for the FCT, as against the states where it's the governor and the state houses of assembly that engage. So we have a situation where the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the National Assembly, and by extension, everyone that works in the FCT Civil Service Ministry, is not only responsible for federal projects and issues around the country, but they're specifically responsible for the FCT. 
So the question around fiscal transparency for the ICT is also a rather question about Nigeria because I mean the logical conclusion one is to draw from this is if the federal government is not fiscally responsible in how accountable it is to Nigerians who live in the ICT, how can they be for the rest of us? Mm. 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 <laughs> That's such a profound question. You can mess it, you can mess it. <laughs> My one question though, right, is should we even because FCT already has um isn't FCT over bloated? Mm. I say this because, like you rightly alluded, the National Assembly is there, <laughs> the president is there, his vice is there, like literally. And it, there is really, so except you can point to me what IGR FCT is generating, you can easily say, okay, oh, River State, they have oil. This is what the IGR is. Okay, maybe yes, um, properties, right? They can generate money from real estate, lands, and all of that. But in the real sense of it, right, it is an already overbloated state. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about borrowing to pay salary, that is the capital where the, the salary, you know, most of those salaries are, are, are consumed because they are the ones that are like over bloated, you know, and all of that. So do we still need to continue this trajectory of having a minister for the FCC? Because we already have leaders everywhere. Why do we still need that person that stands there and I really can't tell, okay, maybe market and all of that, a lot of things that they are doing, but you can just have somebody that oversees the state because i feel like this is just an unnecessary waste of money but help me out because maybe i'm i'm just over i'm um, conservative or something or maybe i can't I, I'm, I'm too dumb to see the picture no so um it, 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 it's a very good question right that that you asked because um for at least 15 years there's been a spirited argument within uh, you know, FCT and policy and legislative and legal circles about whether a minister for the FCT is the appropriate mechanism for governing the the, the federal capital, right? And what or whether we shouldn't abolish, um, you know, that that rule, which is you know not directly. Uh, accountable to FCT voters, for example, right, because they do not elect, right, the, the FCT minister, and maybe, and whether the FCT should have a mayor style, um, you know, a mayor style governing process, as many federal capitals right across the world, and many other cities and capitals right across the world, right, do, because in that case, the mayor is elected by the residents of the federal capital and so it's directly responsible. If people are upset with the performance of the FCT minister, there's no way you can get rid of it. Except the only way the FCT minister changes is if the president wakes up one day and he does not like the person mm. he appointed to that role and wants to change it. With the mayor, at the very least you have four years within which you know give or take you can uh, you can get rid of him. In terms of IGR the FCT makes a fairly decent amount. Now, it's in overall terms, it is not amazing or incredible. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but you have a situation where, uh, because of uh, because of land rights, for example, I think twenty twenty two numbers. I'm just looking at my notes, right? Uh, so twenty twenty two tax revenue for the FCT according to the NBS was uh, 124 right billion era right so there are many banks have um, a preponderance of branches in the FCT there are companies that set up in the FCT but a very very big revenue generating item right in the FCT is property permits and property taxes mm -hmm. right if for anyone who has ever tried to acquire property in Abuja, you understand that it is it is quite the process. I'm sure why you have you have a home in Abuja, so you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, so 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 that's a big um, revenue generating pot, right, for the FCT. And the FCT, the current FCT minister, right, self confessed himself. I think um, 
and it was in the middle of last month that the the monthly wage bill alone for public sector workers in the ICT is eight billion naira a month. Um, so there are lots of uh, the ICT is you know probably the largest construction site, right in in Nigeria. There are multiple capital projects. There are including small projects that ideally any reasonable policymaker would want to pick up things like the light rail you know project for example there are developments in new districts um, and areas that you know you know that still needs to happen there are skyscrapers and things right that are also um, and being con constructed so in that sense the SCT has a lot of things that it needs money to do the concern for me um, and I think the concern that every Nigerian should have about this conversation and why this should bother all of us is if we don't have a sense of where the money is going to or how it is being used, it is very hard for us to even gauge whether the federal government is doing a good enough job. You know, when it comes to democracy, you cannot just use the eye test, you cannot just use what you see or anecdotes or what people tell you over uh -huh. coffee or, uh -huh. you, know, you know, over dinner or when you hand out. Right, you need data, you need figures. In fact, one of the stakeholders that actually needs right proper accountability in this space is the FCT itself, you know, the Federal Capital Territory Administration. They need to understand where they are putting money in, you know, what sort of returns they are getting, and if they should try something else, or you know, what sort of investment they should be prioritizing. But because nobody is really watching the money, and we only have these conversations when these budgetary announcements right happen is accountability and transparency is nearly impossible so the anger and the confusion that's surrounding this conversation right now is i would not say it's misdirected but it's not focused and because it's not focused you know policy makers and political people you know, just ride out this wave of discontent and when we move on to the next thing, to be uh, upset or worried about, we will move there. And you know, the people who asked for, you know, first the five hundred and seventy plus billion naira, then the hundred million naira, we will just quietly. Uh, I don't want to cast aspersions, but they will quietly utilize those resources in ways in which they deem fit, and not ways in which the actual problem, right, needs. And again. Just to rehash the point, the person in Edo State, the person in Katsina, and the person in Gobi should be worried because the FCT is getting more money from the federal government than many Nigerian states, right? So in theory, if the FCT is not efficiently using financial resources, those are financial resources that are automatically denied to other parts of the country. Now, we can have a separate conversation about whether you know, state governments in all of you know these state capitals are judiciously judiciously using the yeah. resources that they get, but there's still a coherent argument to be made, right, about whether by this black hole that is the FCT's finances, the FCT is unwittingly shortchanging other Nigerian states and other projects in other parts of the country that we need to invest in. Mm. Uh, I was just going to ask uh, Ikemesit that uh, why don't we even try to fight for every state, even including the city? Since you say you need money, why don't you just generate your idea? So let's stop this cap in hand situation. But states will not want to do that. They still want to go get federal allocations, you know. But it's because literally, if we start to run our state the way yeah. the US, for instance, they are running their state, where every state. So that's why. If you go to Atlanta, taxes in Atlanta can be it's different. different. It, it Absolutely. It depends on how you, yeah. you, you, yeah. you meet. Yeah. Even when you order some things, they'll ask you where you ship into because they need to put factor yeah. in their taxes. I mean, if we start to think creatively to say, okay, every state generates your idea, maybe all these issues maybe will just fizzle out. But the question for today was, what would 100 billion do for Nigeria's economy? Do you have an idea? If we were to pump in a hundred billion to the Nigerian uh, to Nigeria's economy, what would it do? Um, a lot, right? Um, the so a couple of low hanging fruits, right? The national housing deficit is depending on who you ask, either seventeen million 
to 21 million homes. So basically, Nigeria right now, let's forget about the Niger for a minute, right? About the Nigerians who are being added to our fold every day, right? Through life in this country. The Nigerians that we have now, we need to provide between 17 to 21 million homes, right? For for them. A hundred billion naira will go a long way. Not all the way, but a long way towards addressing that. Mm. If you're talking about um, education, right? So the federal allocation for education, right, in in Nigeria is like two or three times a mm. hundred billion naira. Mm. So basically, a hundred billion naira is somewhere between, you know, a third to almost half of what we have determined. And there are many experts who will tell you that what we allocate towards education is not enough. A hundred billion naira will go along. And specifically with respect to education, I think a hundred billion naira will sufficiently and significantly go along with towards addressing primary and secondary education because I have a very interesting view on education. I think we prioritize tertiary education to okay. the detriment of primary and secondary education. Absolutely. For a functioning economy, the most basic requirement is that you need people who can read and who can write. Yeah. Right. And according to the yeah, according to the 2019 multi-cluster indication survey, the number of Nigerians that can read, write, and count in any language, not in English, is like 24 percent, which is so cool. an unforgivable number of Absolutely. Nigerians. Um, a hundred billion will significantly go along with us addressing healthcare. The health budget also is about two or three times a hundred billion naira. So the same, the same principles with education apply towards health. Nigeria has a primary healthcare gap. There are lots of things that are doing very well in primary healthcare, but Nigeria has a primary healthcare gap. It is uncomfortable if the primary um, touch point that most Nigerians have with the health system is not a primary health care center by pharmacy. It speaks to the lack of infrastructural support and expertise and admin support that primary health has in this country. That people feel a pharmacy is fine for me. Let me not go through the stress of going to the hospital. So those are some of the key things, right? You know, that we can sort of do. I think the final thing I'll say is and um, if you're more socially inclined, a hundred about a hundred billion naira is what we budgeted shortly after COVID to invest into you know what we call social investments, right? So remember that you know um, Nigeria, I don't know what it was, whether it was a you know a social register. So sort of the more, the poorest Nigerian homes, what are we going to give them to support them? You know financially, what we budgeted for our domestic humanitarian interventions was about hundred billion. Naira. So basically. We're giving the equivalent of what we think we're going to spend on supporting the poorest Nigerians to one part of the country. And we don't know how that money is going to be used. That's very concerning. Wow, let's take comments. Hmm. Um, this is from our regular fan, Daniel Ilo. Um, he said, Good evening, my beautiful sisters of what are you saying? What can 100 billion do for Nigeria's economy? The plain truth is that. The Nigerian economy. The plain truth is that the Nigerian economy has really suffered generally. If they are allocating and budgeting that amount for our economy, then it is something to be happy about. And dear beautiful sister D mentioned, mentioned investing in infrastructure, good roads, and so many things that needs attention. So to me, I think we are getting somewhere. In a nutshell, life has to be restored to the Nigerian economy. To Nigeria's economy, your guest made mention of the federal capital territory, FCT, needing funds to do some things, which I agree. So, so, so nice to have my dear beautiful sister, Glory. Thank you. Really miss you a lot. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, well, um, Daniel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, this one is saying that um, the money is too small for Nigeria, for Nigeria's economic, for Nigerian economic. Let's see the exchange rate in Nigeria. To me, let the government bring enough money to make our manufacturing industry work. Let the government make Nigeria a productive country. Yeah, so it says, uh, mm. someone else says 100 billion cannot do anything for the Nigerian economy. It's just like saying what it will a hundred naira do 
for a family of two. No, now. But listen to what the Messit has said. <laughs> Do you understand? If you had listened, you would know that, I mean, based on the three touch points he touched on, healthcare, education, health. healthcare, and... Um, Ikemesi, what was the third one now? But education and healthcare, you would see that... Hum humanitarian. And humanitarian, yes. Yeah, I mean, so you would see that that money can actually go a long way. So for my, to, 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 to the point of why we even had this conversation in the first place is when the federal government, they are drawing up these budgets, always remember that, you see, what I believe in is can this give impact to more people? So if the answer is yes, then that is your way. That's your solution, right? If they say 100 billion are now being pumped into primary and um, what's it called and, uh, and secondary education, and it would significantly transform, you know, a good number of Nigerians, you know, from that illiteracy level to a literate state, then that is where the money should be channeled, not the other way around. Absolutely. But thank you so much, Ikemesi. I think it's always fun yeah. having you. We will bring back the conversation now, because we still have yaks to talk about. We have a lot of things to talk about. We talk, we want to talk about, uh, what's it called, even the student loans. We want to talk about agriculture as well. Agriculture. We will need to bring you back. Thank you so much, Ikemesi, for your time. You always, always honor us. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, uh, D. Thank you, Glory. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, even if it's briefly, we love it. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop your comments and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Abuja cannot pay its bills. We have to get to serious work. Abuja, as it is today, is choking. This was from Professor <laughs> Chukuma Charles Soludo. What is choking? The former Central Bank of Nigeria. <laughs> Now, the governor. Now, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. Yeah.